Uh, my name is Elizabeth Mora. Uh, I'm currently the finance director and the administration director at Hibs International Limited. Uh, I, I come from a family of uh, eight siblings. I'm the third born. And um, having uh, completed my O levels, I moved and I did uh, CPAs. I got up to CPA too. And during our time, I felt I was ready for the job market. And for real, I was because. Uh, I searched for a job and I got a job at uh, Equity Bank. And um, as we say education, you, you never go to the uh, tip of it every time. We, I have done many courses from then. I have done professional courses, I've done uh, credit uh, management, I've done uh, law re uh, relating to banking, and um, I'm still a student as we speak. There was a very interesting program in TV during our days. And um, we used to see children coming up on TV and asking, when I grow up, I want to be so-and-so. And I don't know where that got me, because for me, I used to say every time, I want to be a bank clerk. Prophecy and prophesying for yourself, for real, I became a bank clerk. And um, there was, uh, when I was growing up, there were some people who were bankers, and they were the most decently dressed people. I was really looking forward to be like them, because the best estate used to be their, their, their estate, and uh, I really envied that life. Yes, and um, as you can say, becoming a self-fulfilling professor, <laughs> from, from, uh, 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 as somebody who will prophesy for yourself, I prophesied for myself, and I became a banker. Um, Hibs mean uh, bringing different components together, because we have different components, uh, and especially uh, Hibs, we stand for, we say, we supply good food mood. And good food mood comes with different types of um, uh, things bringing them together, be it the, the table covering, be it the ambience that brings out the food mood. And that's why now we came up with the word uh, Heaves International. International, we are not just bound in Kenya. We have uh, customers uh, in Rwanda, we have customers in Tanzania and also in Uganda. And we've been given a big jurisdiction because uh, we, we, have, we are now in talks with um, some hoteliers in the West Africa. We have, uh, we, are, we, are, we are almost closing deals with people in Mauritius and also in Seychelles. We provide uh, eco-friendly products because our products are, um, we normally say, um, treat the environment right today and you will live in this environment for a very long time. And that's why we got the idea. Uh, we deal with eco-friendly stuff. We, about our table coverings, they feel and look like fabric, but they are all made of paper. Different categories, but they are all made of paper. And uh, we also have candles. You know, uh, you can, there are some places you cannot take the, 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 the fire, especially in the bush, in the, the resorts that are in our game reserves and all that. We have a solution for them. We normally have uh, candles which are charged. They look and feel like a real candle, but it is an electric candle, we can say it. Because you charge it for six hours and you can use it for 24 hours. Some of the factors um, that we would not want them to recur again was um, where we sourced for products. One of the instances and the beginning of uh, the downfall for our other life is um, we decided to source for our petrochemicals in East. The way people are reacting now is very interesting. Initially, we used to uh, try to really tell them the benefits, and uh, you see, they could not really relate. But we have seen that change over time, and now people are embracing.
as a company, we have, uh, just like baby, we have gone through our metamorphosis. Initially, we were in petrochemicals industry. And uh, there we burnt our fingers. And we realized you are really having, um, you, you, your capital, it is too capital intensive. And we thought it's a high time now we change. During the search, and we asked to ourselves, where is the, uh, the world going to? The world is going towards the conserving of our environment. And that's now why we, we started now looking around. Looking around, we were, we were gracious enough to get partners to partner with. Uh, we got um, like Duni. Uh, Duni, they deal, they are, they are our partners in manufacturing. They are manufacturing and as we distribute. And um, that's now why, how we came and redefined ourselves into now the hotel industry and supplying the good food mode. When starting uh, Hives International, there are quite some challenges that we faced. And one of them is the change. You know, you are coming here with uh, new products, uh, things that will disrupt the market, not the normal uh, things that people are used to. And you can imagine, I normally give this example. Like for example, when, uh, we started embracing diapers. It was not easy because we were used to nappies. Nappies that you could clean and reuse and reuse and reuse. The same thing is happening to us. This is a new change. You're bringing uh, fabric uh, products that look like and feel like fabric, but these are just dis disposable items. So you use, and there are some that you can reuse but they have a limited reuse period. So the most, uh, the most challenging uh, bit is to really have people embrace that change. However, we have seen that change. And we were very happy to see even our president announcing the ban on uh, one-time use plastic to us because we already have that solution. We normally provide the papers through. The other challenge uh, I would say is having um, people who are committed to the mission, uh, the, the mission of this company, that is getting the right-minded people to really work with you and to form a team. That has been an uphill task. And um, slowly by slowly we have gotten it because we had to really say a bit goodbye to some of the people we bring on board, but I believe now we are getting it right. Some of the factors um, that we would not want them to recur again was um, where we sourced for products. One of the instances and the beginning of uh, the downfall for our other life is um, we decided to source for our petrochemicals in East and um, we really got some substandard products. So for us, uh, going East is a no-no. And uh, that is, uh, it has been, uh, it is now, um, for us, it's quality. Quality is key for us because we realize when you have, even if you give at a premium, but you give quality stuff, people are likely to stick with you. Um, the other thing is um, coming up with um, uh, some, some, some of the other things that we, we came up is goals, having defined goals and knowing that having even a, uh, a projection of what you want to achieve in like 10 years time. Like now I can tell you, we, we have a way that we have projected. Right now we are distributing for our manufacturing partners in the Netherlands, in Spain and also in Germany. However, going forward uh, in 10 years time, we want to manufacture those products locally. And plans are underway to have that done. Why? Because when you look at the low materials that you are using, sometimes uh, like the coffee cups that you are having, we call them sweet coffee cups. And those coffee cups have been made out of the, 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 the sugarcane wastes. So we already, have that, uh, we already have the raw materials locally. However, we need to really know, the, to get the technological behind it and also the know-how on how to embrace that and have, start doing it uh, locally. We have tried many uh, things. It's not one suit fit all. Because uh, the first thing we thought advertising will bring uh, people on board, we were wrong on that. Because we realized um, the customers need to be educated with the new technology and the new products that we are bringing on board. So uh, it got to a point that now we had to knock on each and every door, especially for, 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 for our big clients. 
There are some now who are now warming up, especially knowing that getting referrals uh, from, from other customers who have already done it. But getting that number one client, we had to really knock, knock their doors and really convince them that these products was to give the, even the ambience and the good food mood for their clients. There are different uh, aspects when you talk about success because for me and for, for Heaves International we believe success is not a destination but it is a journey. How have you done it over time? And this is a time we are really forming it. And uh, over time we have seen now people embracing new change, people embracing ways to conserve the environment. To us that is success number one. When we see that even the country is now embracing the change, for us that's a success. It might not really um, like uh, come and uh, mean profits on our pockets, but we know it is in the right uh, track for even this country. When we conserve our environment today, our children and their children, they will come and get a better place to live in, in this world. Because once we, we change a, a company at a time, I believe sooner or later, we'll have a beautiful country that doesn't have shocks, especially the weather patterns that have really gone haywire, and we'll all enjoy this country. The things that uh, have really propelled us, I would say, is uh, one, the experience we've gotten. Uh, personally, I'm from the finance world. Uh, my, uh, one of the other director is uh, a very good marketer. And the combination of that, we have really seen it take us the next line. And also learning from, from the past mistakes that we have done with, with other businesses. I believe that has been really a cornerstone because what I have come to realize is that some things that happens in our lives, either good or bad, they come to shape our future. And that has really been a cornerstone for us. Uh, even now, going forward, uh, the, the way uh, the, the world is going is on relationship. And we have made sure that relationship is very key for us, both the internal team and also our suppliers and also our customers. It is now coming together and uh, bringing up a close-knit uh, uh, ecosystem that can, can be sustainable. Being a leader, a servant leader, doing what you want your followers to do and having some daily operation methods as a leader is very important. And having non-negotiable stuff that you want to see. Like for example, when we talk about integrity, integrity is a deal breaker, both in terms of our, even our customers when we see they are cutting corners. That tells us that's not a customer that is really willing to go for a long haul. But even the staff here, they know. Integrity is a deal breaker. There are those things that uh, we really commend, going the extra mile, that is, and that one is normally seen from the top leadership of this institution. Because um, when you do it, your followers will have it easier way to do it. Yeah. Being an example and being a role model as a leader is very key for us. The way people are reacting now is very interesting. Initially, we used to uh, try to really tell them the benefits and uh, you see they could not really relate but we have seen that change over time and now people are embracing people are now telling us even giving us suggestion can you kindly add this into your plate can you please add this into your plate I'll give you an example we never used to have uh, bamboo straws and uh, customers have given us feedback. We want over and above the paper straw. Can we have bamboo straws? And we have researched and gotten even local pa partners to partner with and to be able to get to give the customers what they want. Because uh, at the end of the day, if we don't listen to our customers, we are doomed. And so we are very open to listening to our customers, but we can see people em embracing. Our customers are really embracing. Well, is, is uh, what, there are some things that happen in your life and you're like, um, it even mind-boggling. For example, I'll give you an, a recent experience whereby um, we've realized, uh, especially companies outside Africa, they're scrambling for Africa. As I told you initially, um, we partnered with uh, Duni, and Duni uh, having their name top-notch there. There are other manufacturers who are in this business, 
And believe it or not, the other manufacturing uh, and man manufacturers have come knocking our doors and they want us to partner with them. They are even willing to give us friendlier terms and also cheaper products that can even suit this market. For us, that has really been uh, a, a way that has been opened for us and we are willing to embrace it. As we speak, one of our directors is out there exploring other partners that we can come partnering with them. And we are not the people who have gone to look for them. They have come calling us and to go and showcase their products. To us, that tells us the market is so huge. And people are seeing the gold that we are sitting on. At times, we, you know, sometimes you need somebody to come and really tell you that, hey, you're sitting on the gold and you really need to mine it. And what they're seeing outside there, we just need to really scratch a bit uh, down and we are going to mine that gold as Africans and as Kenyans. If I would be given an opportunity to really have a hand in the policy of the land, I would. I would ban all, all, all the like, um, li like the plastics. Maybe it is the education that you are doing over and above supplying. You must have, you must find something different from what the world is offering. Because at times, the most difficult person to ask and answer a question is yourself. But when you are accountable to another person, you make sure that you have already done that. For me, that has been a big one. Uh, there are so many things that uh, I would do differently if I would start the business all over again. And number one is uh, how I went uh, or how we went on marketing for our products. Because we have realized establishing a relationship first before I sell to you is very key. Uh, we used to do the hard selling, but now we have realized, hey, come and first of all get to have a relationship with me and then I will buy, you'll not even sell to me, I will buy what you're selling. And getting interested in other, you know when you get interested in what other people are doing, in turn those people get interested in what you're doing and they become your number one promoters of what you're doing. We have really seen that change. Um, the other thing uh, that we would do differently if if I would be given an opportunity to really have a hand in the policy of the land, I would. I would ban all, all, all the, like, um, li like the plastics, you see, because that would mean market for me, you know. And, um, but slowly that, has, that is really coming and we are very happy about that. There, there is a very big difference with what I expected and what I came to find in the business world. You know when uh, you're employed especially, you're like, salary comes, come what may, your salary comes at the end of the month. But being in business, you realize there are some bills you have to do. You have to pay the employees first, you have to pay the rent, you get whatever remains and you're not guaranteed. So uh, you, you realize you sacrifice so much as, as a business owner. and. Um, as you would expect that running a business is easy, it is not easy. Because coming in, uh, we found that uh, you're, yes, you have the customers, but these customers are pushing for them to get a bigger credit line, a, a bigger credit period. And as a startup, you don't have that muscle to really give 90 days, uh, 60 days, and it is maybe a, a big order. So those are challenges that really we have learned with them and it has even uh, improved my negotiation skills because I have to negotiate based on what I'm capable of doing. Because again, as I told you, integrity is very key for us. I don't want to promise something that we are not willing to give. Yeah, so it is real. And uh, business, 
Uh, once, once, once it is good, yes, we normally talk about giving you freedom, but before you attain that freedom, you have to sacrifice. It just don't come easy. The changes in supply chain uh, is real, uh, and especially with the introduction of the technology. Uh, that has uh, really bring because, and also the globalization aspect of it, in that anyone can supply from anywhere. That even uh, brings the competition to another notch because you're not just competing with the local uh, market, you're co competing across the globe. And it depends, it depends with the now, where, where is your uh, competitive advantage? What kind of value are you giving to your, to your customers? And that's when now they will stick with you. Maybe it is the education that you're doing over and above supplying. You must have, you must find something different from what the world is offering. Now we are no longer now playing uh, across our <laughs> just local market and people are embracing technology in that they are able even to compare you with others where still you are, they're just locally and they, so you must make sure you are one step ahead of your customer and really giving them the best at all times. Their interest has to be within you, at your heart. What they think, what they, they, they you have to even show them the way, that this is where the world is going. Otherwise, uh, time will come and you'll, be, you'll run out of business. Uh, the ch challenges that we are currently ex uh, experiencing are payments. Payments is a big one in that you have a contract with a customer, but of uh, honoring this most likely um, is a task, uphill task. Uh, and um, I will give an example with even uh, how the local, um, the, the, how locally we are affected by the cash flows. Because you will see the, uh, once you supply and the customers tell you, you know what, where I was, all the people I was serving, they have not paid me. So how can I pay you? And for sure they will come and prove that yes, this is the, the, the orders that I did, but my payments are still pending. So that uh, backlog goes on and on and on. But I hope um, that the, the new uh, policy that uh, payments should be done within 60 days is implemented. Once that is implemented, things will be easy on, on, on the supplies and uh, because payments is the biggest. The tips that I would share is uh, one, you must have a dream. And uh, I, was, I, I was happy to see one of, our, uh, one of our people in Kenya raising the flag up there. And what I took home is no one is limited. So the best that you thought you can do the best, you can do better than your best. And for me, I'm taking that as a challenge. But everything means work. You have to be willing to work. Not just to walk the leap walk, but you have to put on your effort. Once you put on your effort, you will definitely get somebody to catapult you to the next level. It might, you might see as if things are not working right now. But when you see, for me, uh, and uh, when I see things are not working, I normally console myself maybe. There is a lesson in life that I need to learn from whatever situation you are in. And once you get that lesson, you will go to the next level. So the thing is challenging yourself from one level to another. And once you do that, when you look behind, when you look back, you not realize even yourself. You'd like, oh my goodness, have I been able to accomplish this? And also having uh, an accountability partner, that has really helped me. You know, opening um, your heart, opening, um, giving somebody a leeway to come and question you, to come and question your plans, to come and really question your thinking and refine your thinking together. And once you have the non-negotiable goals, you have given that person a reason to come and question you. You said you're going to achieve this. You have not achieved why. You must be willing to even uh, really give that, open that way for them to come and really, and it has really helped me. Because at times, the most difficult person to ask and answer a question is yourself. But when you are accountable to another person, you make sure that you have already done that. For me, that has been a big one. Other profession that I would want to venture into, and I'm really thinking about, is sharing my life and experiences to other women, especially. I've realized that maybe whatever I have conquered, 
I would take it simply and um, I will take it as uh, no challenge for me. But I've realized other ladies and women are really struggling with it. I would wish to share my experiences. If my experiences would have an impact in uh, catapulting a person from one level to another level. The other thing I, I wish to venture into is uh, mentorship. And mentorship, I mean also counseling, because we have realized we have so much sick society. Our society is sick, people are sick mentally, financially, but basically mentally, because we have experienced, we have, we have seen people committing suicide, doing other crazy things, and I believe I would have an impact if I can only change one person at a time. It will not happen in a day, but I believe God will open a way.